So Frank's challenge is a challenge to specific statements made by an officer under oath, made by an affiant under oath to a judicial officer in the, for the purposes of getting a warrant. Okay. So again, all we really ask of officers is that they don't lie. There's all sorts of reasons officers can, they don't have to prove their case. They just have to get to probable cause. They can use inadmissible things. They can use hearsay. They can use all sorts of stuff. They can use feelings and intuition and training and experience. They can use all of that shit to build up a, what's called a totality of the circumstances that says they are more likely than not to find evidence of a particular crime in a particular place at a particular time. And they ask the judge for permission to do that in, uh, as a requirement of the fourth amendment to make the search reasonable. Okay. All they have to do is get to probable cause that they will find evidence of a particular criminal act at a particular place and a particular time. That's what they have to do. And they get hugely way to do it. The one thing we ask is that in doing this, we give you all this room, all the room in the world to work. Just don't lie. Just don't lie. Just don't lie. Hey, just don't lie. Here's how crazy it is. A person who you don't know comes up to the officers and says, hey, I have heard that that person right there who I have no connection to is routinely abusing and beating their children or whatever. Like they, they say that. The officer's like, well, that's crazy. And then they start looking around and then they find other things to kind of see if they're going to find any evidence of that. And like, who knows what it's going to be? Uh, videos, it could be bruised children. It could be, and maybe the person just saw the child walking, looking solemn and had a bruise on their, their face and their arm or whatever. And then they say, I, they heard some like sort of tussling. They heard raised voices or whatever. And the child came out with these bruises on them and they believe that they're beating children or whatever. And then maybe they're running a fight club, an illegal fight club for kids. Who knows? But someone out of nowhere can say that. And a cop can go, this person, because they don't know the other person, has no interest. They're just a concerned citizen worried about the cheering. They're going to go ahead and use that as part of the basis for their search warrant request. And we go, well, but that's insane. This person doesn't know them. They've never been in their house. They didn't actually witness anything. They heard a scuffle. They saw a result. And they don't know that actually what the kids are doing was playing Dance Dance Revolution and they were laughing about something and they fell and they got bruised. Who knows, right? And they investigate it. They execute the search warrant, find nothing, whatever. Oh, no harm, no foul. That's not true, but that's what, that's what they do. They have all this leeway to do that where someone can make some anonymous report and their very anonymity is some sort of reliability because they must be just doing it out of genuine concern. Now that person could be a crackpot, but if the cop doesn't know they're a crackpot, it's fine. However, what if the person is literally a crackpot known to the officer to be insane or to be an over-reporting Karen, for example? The officer says, I get four of these reports a week from this person about different people around town that they've never met. They just think everybody's abusing children all the time. They then have a duty to tell the judge, hey, judge, I want to do a search warrant about this abuse, but this person's kind of weird. They've reported four people in the past month. None of those have panned out. We're not really sure what's going on, but I have reason to believe that this one's okay. And the judge is going to go, give me more, give me let whatever it is. Give me more about why I should believe this person or have you corroborated anything? Maybe. Or the judge is going to go, you know what? Really worried about the kids. Go for it. All they ask though, was that if the cop knew the person was a crackpot, they say it. Just say they're a crackpot so the judge can make the fucking decision with all of the information. If the cop knows the person's a crackpot, but they don't tell the judge that, you have to ask why. Why wouldn't you just say it? Because maybe you don't have enough if that person's a crackpot. And if that's the case, then that's a violation of the rights and you're just asking a judge to sign it. So anyway... All we really ask is that they don't lie. The Franks challenge says they lied here and here and here and here. And because of these lies, the warrant was issued incorrectly. And it's not the judge's fault because the judge is relying on the officer to report truthfully the reasons for the warrant. 
So if the if the officer lies and the judge relies on it, we don't blame the judge because the judge's the judge's job is to rely on the officer's truthful statements. And that's why the only fucking thing is just don't lie. So Frank's challenge is just a challenge to any of those statements. It says they're a lie and says that that lie is material. Now, if they if they make some misrepresentation that has nothing to do with issuing the search warrant, then, oh, well, that sucks. But did it, did it, if they change that, if they get rid of that line, does the search warrant still issue? If so, eh, I mean, if it doesn't have any bearing on it, like they might just say, well, this guy's here, here's an easy one. Uh, the guy's 55 years old, but really the guy's just a hard 45, you know, like, he's like, ha ha. He's 55 years old. Well, like, what does him being 55 versus 45 have to do with the issuance of the warrant? Probably nothing. The guy got his age wrong. Maybe he typoed it. Maybe he intentionally got it wrong. Maybe he just thought he was older. Doesn't matter. That representation, probably not going to matter. I'm sure there's a case where it would. But the idea is that that alone, like, they lied once is not enough to overturn a warrant. They have to lie in material ways that are to the issuance of the warrant. And that's what the Franks challenge is for. It's Franks versus Delaware is the case. Maybe we should go through it some point, uh, but I should probably wait about 16 days for that. So, okay. On to uh, more of what happened at court today. So we raised the Franks challenge in our motion. Um, we challenged the, we also challenged the seizure of the firearms. I'm going to let the motion do most of the talking. I mean, granted, you haven't gotten good analysis of it that I've seen anywhere, but Hey, sorry. I can't really, I can't really do the analysis for my own case, which sucks. Cause my case is wildly fucking interesting, wildly fucking interesting, but I can't do the analysis. It, this is one that kind of, you know, I obviously don't want it to be happening to me just uh, on principle, but I want to be on the sidelines reporting on this case because it's fucking wild if you take a step back from it and you're not just in it trying to, you know, get your crucify berries or whatever it is. Um, if you actually take a step back and analyze the case, there's so much to it that is fucked up and, and there's more to come, but again, time and place, but I can't do that. I can't do that analysis. I would love to, but because it's my own case, I'm self-interested. One, people should have some level of distrust for whatever I say because it'll obviously be lensed and biased towards me. Obviously going to do that. I can't undo that. One, in my own legal interest, I can't undo that. Two, it's impossible to divorce yourself entirely from the situation. So I can't do the analysis. But if you read, there's the Frank's challenge and the second part is the seizure of the firearms. And that one's pretty fucking interesting because it's another one of those questions of we give you all the leeway in the world. All we do is ask you to do one thing and that's to make your seizure warrants say what you're taking. And if you have to take something else because you find something else that you think might be part of a different crime. You just have to get another warrant unless there's a valid exception to the warrant requirement. Fourth Amendment is simple. Any search is presumptively unreasonable. And people are to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Warrants make searches pre presumptively reasonable. You have to have probable cause and a warrant or probable cause and a valid exception to the warrant requirement to engage in any search or seizure or seizure. A warrant makes a seizure presumptively reasonable, but warrants for seizures have particularity requirements that are, that are more narrow than those of searches for searches. You have all sorts of things. You have a plain view exception. You have all these ways that a search can occur in the moment. Seizures the exception for a seizure is I have to take this because if I don't take this now, if I don't take this thing now, the evidence is likely to become corrupted or destroyed or go somewhere. That's why they can usually see something out of a car. Cars move or a package in the mail. 
uh, like the U.S. Postal Service, if they're inspecting a package, they can search and typically seize what's in them without a warrant because mail moves and it's small and it's concealable. If they find, if they find evidence of what they believe to be a crime that is outside of the scope of a particularized warrant, then they have to either just get another warrant for the seizure of other items or they have to come up with an exception to the warrant requirement that exists at the time of the warrants uh, of the of the seizure's execution in our case they seized what they alleged to be firearms that they alleged that i own and they did so um outside of the scope of the warrant the warrant doesn't mention firearms in the slightest not at all. And so we have to ask, okay, so then if they wanted to seize the firearms, they should get a warrant that says they can seize the firearms. All they have to do is ask a judge. We know they can get a warrant in four minutes. We know that. They can get a warrant in four minutes. So they can just ask a judge to issue a warrant to seize the firearms. We know that I was arrested. Lady Brackets was arrested. Uh, Miss April was arrested. And our children were removed from the property. They were put in the care of family temporarily and that the, the police officers had secured the property. So there's no way that those firearms are leaving the property. None. And yet they didn't secure a warrant for the seizure. So then we ask why. And the question why is the scariest question for every government official ever because they just do government officials just do. And when they're forced to ask why they did something, they go, Oh fuck. <laughs> Wait, I have to explain it. It's like, well, yeah, there are rules. Oh, well, but I, what if I don't want to explain it? Or what if I can't explain it? Or what if the explanation is bad? And because we have rights, we get to assume that the government is tyrannical, that the government is actually oppressive, and that the government is actually able to leverage the police state against you. And that's not a crazy principle. It's the founding principle. So we raised that issue. Now, what ended up happening at court was rather anticlimactic, like I said. The state asked for extra time because they wanted to respond by written brief. Now, they don't always do this. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they would argue it there. Sometimes not. They asked for time. The judge granted them time. They get to respond in, I think, nine days. And then we get something like five days after that to respond with our response to their reply. So they, well, our reply to their response. Uh, so they get to respond to our motion in writing. And here's what happens next. The judge should be ruling on the two remaining issues in the motion. One, the Franks hearing. And again, the goal of the filing of the motion that we made is to ask the court for a Franks hearing where the court will do the analysis. The purpose of our filing is to make a prima facie showing that a Franks hearing is required. I believe we have done that pretty fucking well. Once we, if we get that, if we get the judge to agree to that, that doesn't mean we win the motion. It means that we get the hearing. And then at the hearing, we would challenge the parts of the warrant with, with uh, I guess, more scrutiny and the state would respond. The seizure issue is a separate issue and may be resolved by hearing or may just be resolved on the filings. If the seizure if the seizure issue is successful and they find that the guns were seized unconstitutionally, then we would move to strike the guns as any sort of evidence. And that should have a pretty obvious effect on on the case. But um, yeah, it's uh, today ended up being very quick. It could have been more in depth, but the state uh, chose to respond in writing. Now, I know that there's a lot of people out there who may try and do some prognostication or whatever, some spitballing on what that means. Let me just spell it out very simply. If the state thought that they could win at oral argument today, 
because the motion is so bad and the legal reasoning is so out there, they would have just done it because there is nothing stopping the state from having their argument today and just saying, Your Honor, this is ridiculous. This isn't the standard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's nothing that prevented the state from doing that. Instead, the state chose to take it up on briefing. And that does not mean that the state thinks they have a weak case or that we're going to win or mud stomp them or whatever. But again, there's some sensationalists out there expressing an opinion that, uh, that the legal arguments were so horrifically stupid and terrible that they shouldn't even be made. And those retards were obviously wrong. And that's just shown that the state is going to take and brief it rather than just dismiss it. Now, the state, again, they could have just walked in and said, Your Honor, this isn't how Franks works. This is a non-practicing lawyer. Throw, throw the book at him and also put him in prison uh, and also kill him. Like, they could do that, right? Maybe in Korea or Thailand or something. But instead, they chose to actually have to engage the arguments. I remember that that third one, that uh, Fifth and Sixth Amendment one, we were so wrong on. But yeah, so now we just have to wait for the filings to go through. And this case uh, gets to take a fuckload longer. Automatically. And the train fucking chugs along, dude. And that's what's rough about this process. It's a fucking millstone around your neck. And you're trying to swim in the ocean. There's no, there's no floor that you can touch. And every time that you go in, every time your lawyer shows up in court, every time they write a motion, every time the government sends you something, every time the government asks for more time in another hearing, government asks for whatever, it's, that's the government getting paid. And that's you paying. And they don't care. They don't give a shit. You're under their thumb and they're happy about it. And that's the system you're in. And you don't get to fight. Like, again, you can try fighting. You can try yelling and screaming what outside the courthouse. Are you going to go on your YouTube channel and profess your innocence? And, oh, they're all going to. Nope. They won't matter a fucking lick except for what you do in court. Won't matter at all. And for them, it doesn't ever have to. Because a bunch of people will be like, it's good government did that over and over and over. And all people like me can think is, my God, how fucking lost we are. And also, I hope you never need a defense attorney. <laughs>